North American Bigfoot Encounter Stories. I was driving along Route 6 crossing the Connecticut state line into Rhode Island. The road is very dark, heavily wooded in this particular area. As I was traveling east, something very quickly moved across the road in front of me. I was driving approximately 55 miles an hour. Once I registered what I was seeing, I also realized that whatever it was had walked on two legs. It cleared the entire guardrail on the side of the road in one step and was gone. I was spooked. The entire incident lasted less than 30 seconds, though I think about it often, especially when I drive through that same area at night. This occurred back in April of 2010. A follow-up investigation report was done. The witness happens to be a professional behavior analyst, and the following additional information was obtained during a 20-minute phone call. The witness is a very familiar with the two-lane state road and specific area in which the sighting took place. Having traveled the road numerous times in the past and at the same general time, the witness was traveling with young children who were asleep in the back seat. She was on her cell phone driving east when the sighting took place. She observed a dark bipedal animal move with a relatively fast, steady gait across the road from her right to left as an oncoming westbound car was approaching in the distance. Her car passed the animal after it had stepped over the guardrail adjacent to the westbound lane and observed the same animal take a few steps down an embankment and then disappear from sight. She described the movement in crossing the road and stepping over the rail as smooth and fluid. The approximate distance of the animal from the front of the car as it traversed the road was indeterminate. However, it was of sufficient distance that she herself had time to slow down as this bipedal animal crossed the road. The witness's car headlights caught the lower half of the body, which she described as hairy with no reflective light. This section of Route 6 on which this sighting took place is a relatively flat area, swampy, dense woodland on both sides of the road. This area is very dark at night, due to the complete absence of ambient lighting from streetlights, nearby homes or businesses along the road. The general area is marked by low rolling hills and wetlands within relatively large tracts of uninhabited state-protected land. The sighting took place near a large river, which is characterized by deciduous trees, mixed forests, coupled with freshwater waterlands. This biodiverse environment supports a wide range of mammalian creatures, like deer, bobcats, foxes, waterfowl species, and potentially a Bigfoot. The exact date was October 15th, 1998. I remember it like it was yesterday. I was training for a mountain bike race, and this was to be my last ride prior to the race. I was riding at the Black Hut Management area right here in Glendale, Rhode Island. Along for the ride was my three-year-old mixed breed Shepherd Lab large dog. It was sunny, but cool, and I planned to spend an hour or so breaking sweat. As I weaved my way through the trails, I had to leash my dog to cross the street. After I unhooked him, we started up a hill toward a chasm. It's small and kids hang around there and drink beer, have fires. At the crest of the hill, I could see the top of the chasm, approximately 50 yards away. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed something that first appeared to be a dirty white blanket perhaps hung on a small tree. Suddenly, I think it hurt us. It turned as it was squatting with its back to me. It saw me and stood up and disappeared into the woods. I was shocked. I could not believe what I had just saw. From my vantage point, I would say the animal was white or gray, but very dirty looking. In no way 
did it resemble a man. I did not see the face clearly, but from what I did see, although it stood fairly erect, its gait and posture was like that of an ape. The arms were not long like a gorilla, and oddly, it was nowhere near seven feet tall. I'd estimate maybe six at best. I reversed my direction and rode immediately to the top of the chasm. I searched for footprints and hair, but could not find any. I walked a short distance in the woods in the direction where it disappeared. My heart was pounding so loud, I could practically hear it. I knew it was nowhere in the general area. My dog was not barking, and any time there is an animal near fox, coyote, deer, my dog barks and will usually give chase. Interesting point is that my dog never barked. In fact, I don't think he saw, heard, or smelt it. I noticed no unusual smell in the area, and also noted no signs of broken branches and no way to determine its direction. I've told one or two people, and in November of 1998, a friend and I, with digital and audio cameras, spent two weekends hiking in the area nearby, directly behind the chasm, but with no results. I also snowshoed the area after the first snow. I was beginning to believe I had just imagined it. Then, in 2002, I met a hunter in a bar and asked him if he had ever hunted at Black Hut. He told me yes, and once he saw what he describes as a white gorilla there. I had chills and related my own personal story. The differences were in color. He stated white. The one I saw was more gray, and said the one he saw was eight feet tall. Still, same place, same type of sighting. What made me write this is the other two Rhode Island sightings seem to be very similar. I wish I could have seen it longer and closer. I've told very seldom people this story for fear they might think I'm crazy. The only reason I'm taking the time to report this is because of a very recent entry a friend of mine who knew this story told me about. My story takes place in Charlestown, Rhode Island, back in the late 1970s. My mother and father and I used to live in a wooded area around the Indian Cedar Swamp and property owned by United Nuclear, which probably comprises several thousand acres. The property surrounding our home was mixed white Atlantic juniper swamp, scarlet, red, and white oaks with old growth white pine stands mixed in, all with a dense understory of briars, mountain laurel, and blueberry brush. We lived off a road with three houses on it. The houses were all built close to the entrance of the same development. The road was a part of a series of roads that were put in at the start of development. The roads were oiled and had been left to grow in after years of little to virtually no use. It looked like the developer had started and somehow went belly up. These roads were great to ride bikes on or even take an evening cruise on after bringing my father dinner at his second job. My mother drove a baby blue Mustang Mach 1 and she would drive around the roads with me looking at deer before we retired to our home for the evening. As a kid, I remember this being a highlight to the evening. I was, at the time, maybe eight years of age, and my mother and I on this particular night in the late 70s commenced our ride around the roads to see if we could see any deer. It had been raining earlier with thunder and lightning mixed in. Now, it was just raining. We were rounding a corner on one of the roads that paralleled the Indian Cedar Swamp, and as we started downward, we noticed the road was obstructed by a large brown downed oak tree. The tree had green leaves. This makes me think it was summer, or possibly early fall. So, it had recently come down. We guessed maybe in the storm earlier, possibly lightning. The road was very narrow, 
and the brush along the side of the road made it difficult to back the car around to turn around. The rain was falling, but not heavy. The wipers were on, and the headlights on the car were on as well. As my mother turned the front end of the car, the lights were cast on the left side of the road, where the tree had been broken off from its stump. We were maybe a car length and a half away from the stump. Beside the tall, fractured stump stood what looked like a large, white, yellow-white ape. It was maybe six to seven feet tall, long hair, face flat, long, massive arms. Its head appeared to be without any neck, and its chest was very broad. My mother and I froze momentarily. Five seconds, maybe ten, and the figure remained still, staring at us. My mother floored the car into reverse. I remember the terror of it all the sound of gravel hitting the fender wells, the sound of brush crushing against the car, and then the acceleration as she sped off. We were clear as to what we saw, and we have no question in our mind that we saw something in an ape-like shape that night. This we are certain of. We need no one to tell us what we saw. It's crystal clear. For years, we told no one, we would talk about it in our home in privacy. Even my father found this same story hard to accept. We've never forgotten this, and this story would never have been told if it wasn't for someone else informing me of a similar sighting. I'm now in my 30s, an extremely active hunter, farmer, and woodsman. I hunt deer 40 days a year in Maine, Rhode Island, Connecticut, and New Jersey. I implore automated cameras, which are triggered by heat. I have never seen a picture of a Bigfoot on my film. I've seen pictures of deer on my 50-acre tract of land that I would never believe are there if I didn't see it on my film. I know every inch of my land and the surrounding property, and yet these mystery deer show up at all hours on my cameras, frequently at that. How can they move right around our hunting parties in such a small area and never be seen? I'll never know. Even today, I find it hard to accept what we definitely saw. Listen, I'm not a fan of ghosts, UFOs, or even Bigfoot. I'm not sure to this day what I saw wasn't a man in a costume, dressed up out in a rainstorm, a half mile or more away from any home, waiting for my mother and me to drive down the road to try and give us a good scare. The only thing I can say is it was a darn good costume and a darn good plan. What we saw is this is something I would swear to a polygraph test, as I'm sure my mother would. While attending URI in the fall of 1974, I would stay at my girlfriend's mother's house on the weekends. I only had a five-day meal book plan. It was Sunday evening, about 10 p.m., when I decided to head back to school on my 10-speed bike. Very dark in the area, it being mostly wooded, country-like setting, but yet still city. I was going down her street and noticed my front center pull brake needed to be adjusted. I stopped under a streetlight at the end of her street, which is an intersection to adjust the brake. Directly in front of me was a small field that sloped down and away from me, pitch black background, tall grass, and a few bushes being lit by the streetlight. Typical New England, oak, maple, and pine trees. As I was fixing my brake, I began hearing very loud footsteps of some sort of biped coming from the field on the slope side, more like a crushing thud. I could hear the actual compression being placed, like someone dropping a heavy metal ball or rock on the ground. I looked up to see if I could see anything, and I just said out loud to myself, it's nothing. I went back to fixing my brake. I noticed it was getting closer and felt very apprehensive. 
the sound was coming in my direction. All of a sudden, this dog starts barking like crazy, and I could hear the chain snap as it either tries to attack or get away from something. I said to myself, it's time to go. As I started, I turned left to head north, into a few pedals. From out of the darkness, steps into the streetlight, this white-looking gorilla. The legs present themselves, then the body as it comes to rest on its knuckles. The twenty, maybe twenty-five feet away, directly across the street from the perhaps six feet tall, maybe four hundred pounds or more, massive arms that went straight down on its knuckles, knees slightly bent, the head higher in the back, connected to the neck, all in one mass. The face dark, deep strong, but primitive-like. The eyes were closer together and set very deep in the face. The nose and mouth were human-like. Its nose was wide, and around the mouth, black hair that went down on each side. It looks up with its head and chest and sees me. Eyeball to eyeball, as I look back, trying to see if this thing is real. Human-like in appearance, the face is not like a primate, but has a distinctive animal presence, since the eyes are close together. I was never so scared of my life and knew I had to stay. I don't think I would have survived the attack. The way it was positioned gave it an explosive start as it decided to chase me down the street. My heart was pounding out of my chest. My eyes had tears in them. With all the might, I pedaled as this thing ran on two legs. Then, down on its knuckles and back up again. Perhaps for ten yards. I remember how long its hair on its arms moved with each reach. Thank God I was in first gear. A good five-second chase, and it was all over. It had stopped in the middle of the street just swaying back and forth, turned and just cleared this rock wall, all in one motion from a grass sidewalk. At the top of the hill, I began riding in circles. I didn't know what to do. I could not comprehend the situation I was in. I knew one thing. I was not running back. I cut through her grandmother's situation I was in. I cut through her grandmother's yards and made it back to her house, not trying to look crazy or anything. They asked me what's wrong. So, honestly, I told them what had happened and agreed that it was best to go back in the morning. A white gorilla was seen in a gravel pit by a friend in an area at the time, but these are just other stories I've heard. Some ten years after the incident, my wife overhears a conversation between a botany professor and a friend at CCRI College during lunch, all about being on a field trip in an area, and claims to have seen a white Bigfoot. My wife turns and said my husband just saw one too. I was walking from the house to a detached garage with my daughter at about 2.30 a.m. when we both seen a human-like white furry figure, approximately 100 feet from where we were. Our house borders the Huron National Forest. The figure was halfway down a hill, looking in our direction. It moved very quickly in a half-moon circle and crouched down near a tree. We walked toward the figure, and I noticed it was still near the tree, but it bent over slightly, almost like it was trying not to be noticed. We both ran back to the garage and talked about what we had saw decided we didn't know what it was, mostly because of its size and the way it moved. When we got back, we both said how hard our hearts were beating. It was truly a scary experience. My daughter's name is Madison. We talked about it for a long time that night, and just tried to come up with any animal it could have been, but we're not sure. The next day, I called my good friend Jeff, he has thorough experience in this field. We walked that area and seen a lot of deer activity and droppings. It was thriving with wildlife. We also noticed that 
when we walked to the place where we had seen it in the forest. The forest itself was very quiet. No other animal sounds. A follow-up investigation report was done. I met the witness at his house. His daughter could not meet up with us. The back edge of the property meets up with a tower line. Behind the tower line is the Huron National Forest. There is a 15-foot drop from the tower line to the forest floor, where there is a small clearing where this sighting took place. The witness and daughter were walking from the house to the garage when something moving very quickly along the tower line caught their attention. They couldn't tell what it was. He described it as a blur. When he looked back to the tower line, he could see the head of something standing on the drop-off behind the tower line looking just at him. The witness and daughter both saw the head, but could not recognize what animal it was and began walking toward it. When they were walking toward it, the animal turned to its right, disappearing down the drop-off. When the witnesses got close enough to see over the edge, they looked in the direction the animal was going, but did not see anything. To the right was a small tree, and next to the tree, they saw a figure standing motionless with its back to them. They both see it standing there and run back to the garage. He describes the animal as being eight to nine feet tall with white fur, very broad shoulders. It was incredibly muscular, with arms that went to its knees. When they saw the head looking at them, it was too far away to make out any real details. I was taking out trash to my dumpster, down at the end of my driveway. My driveway is fairly long, over 100 yards, and wooded on both sides, and it makes a slight turn. I had a flashlight with me as I performed my task. When I was returning, my light was trained on the ground, before me, watching where I was walking. I looked up and saw something moving away from the entrance to my garage. My main door was open. I could see in the lights from the inside of my garage that it was at least tall as I was, six foot plus, and brownish in color. I shined my light at it. It moved purposefully, but not hurried. Quickly, but not in fear. It was upright, but I don't recall seeing links although my light was at the upper portion of it. As it moved, it almost glided, without the usual bobbing a person would make, and it was silent as it moved. I did not notice any facial or distinguishing features. As it went behind my camper, I stopped in my tracks for a moment to determine what it was I actually saw. I believe that I caught a trespasser trying to rob me, I rounded the corner of the camper and shined the light at the edge of the tree line of my roundabout. And it was there again, the same form. But it moved into the tree line, almost looking as it faded into them. No sound, not a twig snapping. I never saw any eyes or face. I ran in to grab my rifle, told my girlfriend to lock the door behind me as I went out to where it disappeared. The area was full of dead fallen trees and other brush. I tried to traverse to it, but had an extreme difficulty in doing so, let alone without any sound. My neighboring property is actually a hunting cabin. A hunting party had just returned from dinner and saw me with a flashlight and rifle clamoring through the woods to their property. Unfortunately, Open-mindedness and cool heads were abound. I explained what had happened. My neighbor stated it could have been a black bear walking on its hind legs, looking for the garage. It seemed plausible. I know there are bears around my house, but that explanation never did sit right. With no tracks, the form taller than a bear, even on hind legs. I didn't see a snout, and it wasn't barrel-shaped, it was more thin and human-like, gliding instead of the typical wobble a walking bear does. 
and the total absence of sound when entering the woods. I was more convinced it was a ghost more than a bear. A follow-up report was done. First, I would like to disclose that the witness and I shared an office at work. He is aware of my interest in the Bigfoot phenomena, and as we were discussing a recent Bigfoot town hall that I attended, he related his sighting to me. After listening to his account of what he saw that night, I suggested that he file a sighting report on the BFRO website. After I was assigned this report, I met the witness at the house where the incident had taken place. He has since sold the house and the approximately 17 acres that it sits on. The driveway loops around an area about 75 feet in diameter where the witness parked his fifth wheel camper. I had the witness repeat his steps of that night and can add the following details to his account. After taking the garbage to the road and returning down the dirt driveway, he was using the flashlight to avoid stepping in the many dips that are scattered all along the length of the driveway. As he got closer to the house, he noticed movement coming from the direction of his garage. His first sighting of the creature occurred when he was approximately 50 feet away. The creature was moving away from the garage and towards his fifth wheel camper, walking in a smooth bipedal motion, which the witness described as gliding and very smooth. His truck and girlfriend's car were parked in front of the garage and would have blocked some of the light emanating from the garage. His adjustable flashlight was set to a narrow beam. Pointing his flashlight towards the light, he illuminated the creature's torso, which, along with the vehicles blocking the light from the garage, might explain why he did not see the creature's legs at all. Observing the creature from the side, the witness estimates that the upper torso, width, back to front, ranged from 20 to 24 inches, and the shape of the head from side was cone-like. The creature did not look in his direction and continued walking away from the garage, disappearing behind the fifth wheel. Using the 12-foot height of the fifth wheel as reference, he was able to estimate the height of the creature at around 8 feet tall. When the creature went behind the fifth wheel, the witness quickly walked up to the fifth wheel and observed the creature entering the woods on the other side of the circular driveway, roughly 100 feet from the front of the fifth wheel. At this point, the creature disappeared quietly into the swampy woodland, which are very thick, with many downed trees and brush covering the ground, making for the perfect hiding place for something like this to exist. My name is Michael, and I'm 17. I had a Bigfoot sighting up here in Michigan. I was fishing one day, and I was all alone. I walked up and down the river for nearly a mile and a half. I was fishing, and all of a sudden, this huge rock hits the water, like 50 feet down from me, and makes quite a huge splash. This is in the Whitemore area, and... I looked down for me, in the river, and then this big, giant, ape-like creature looked out over the river, at me, literally scaring the crap out of me. I noticed right away it had really long hairy arms, big, broad shoulders, and the head on this thing was way bigger than any human. The creature stood at least 11 feet in the air. Then, it turned and started walking into the woods but it walked toward me. It made like five steps and stopped. When it walked, you could hear the sticks and leaves cracking under its feet. It got quiet, too quiet. Even the birds stopped chirping. It was getting scary. So I packed up my fishing gear and began walking curiously toward the trail. I was yelling into the woods and asking, hello, is anybody there? But nobody answered, so I started walking down the trail. On the quarter mile back to the main road, I began walking back and kept getting this feeling someone or something was watching me. I turned around and 
as I turn around. This big giant thing jumped over this barbed wire fence and ran up the hill, leaving this big stump swaying aggressively. It was up and over the hill in like five seconds. This thing was fast. I ran up the hill, but on the other side, where there was a large field. It was gone by then. Later on, I bumped into my aunt, my brother and my cousin. And they said that they had heard something walking up by this pond when they heard a low growl. Then, it walked away. I really hope you guys investigate this case. I did some research, and the last sighting in Losco County was in 1985. Was this the same Sasquatch? Please help me understand what I saw. Please? A follow-up investigation report was done. I spoke by phone with the witness, who now lives downstate. He went over the story, stating he had been walking up and down the river for quite a while, fishing as he went. The steelhead were running, and this is what he was fishing for. He stated that a rock had to be the size of a softball that was thrown into the river, but not too far from him. He looked, and shortly after, he seen the animal lean out over the bank, looking at him. He stated the brush was very thick all along the river, and all he could see was the upper part of this animal. He stated that it leaned back and disappeared. A minute or two later, he said he heard three very loud knocks. They were so loud, he jumped. He compared them to a gun going off. He said it got totally silent with no birds or any noise, except the river. He packed his equipment and started heading back up the trail. He got to an open area with a barbed wire fence running all along it. The area on the other side of the fence went uphill with a field on the other side. He seen the animal go over the fence, causing it to sway heavily back and forth. He stated that it went quickly up the hill, taking massive strides. He stood there for a moment, then ran up the hill after it, trying to get a much better look. He said he was out of breath when he gets to the very top, and this creature had vanished completely. He stated he was amazed it could have vanished from view across that field that quickly. He is six foot three inches and in very good shape. It took him much longer to get up that hill running. He proceeded to work his way back to the trail and ran into his aunt, brother, and cousin. They said they were at a pond near the top of the hill and heard something growl at them, then heard heavy footfalls leading away into the heavy woods heading down towards where the witnesses were fishing. The witness stated a couple of times that he got a very strong feeling of being watched after the animal leaned out over the riverbank while walking back to the car. He described feelings of both fear and amazement at what he had seen. He was almost impressed by how quickly it was able to move for how big it was. When asked if he was sure it was 11 feet tall, he stated it was at least 10, and he felt sure it was taller than that. He could see the muscles moving and described it as huge overall, especially the head, describing the face as black, but the cheeks were bare and the skin being shiny, like it was oily or something. He estimated the distance when it leaned out and looked at him, maybe about 15 feet possibly a little closer. The area of the sighting is a combination of heavy forest with some sparse farmlands. There are several rivers, creeks, and small lakes in that area. Wildlife is abundant with deer, bear, coyote, bobcat, and small game. The witness felt was possibly going to the river to catch the steelhead that were running. He was overall excited about the experience, but very shaken. He has not been back to the spot since. I'm not entirely sure if what lives in our woods is a Bigfoot. All I can say is 
that as long as I can remember, there's been something there. If you take walks at night along the woods, you could hear something walking along beside you in the woods, but it never comes out. There is sometimes an awful screeching noise as well. In fact, one night, me and my boyfriend were outside, and we heard something walking in the woods. Our house is about 20 feet from the wood line. We stopped to listen. It sounded like something scared whatever it was. It sounded as if something large holding a 2x4 horizontally went crashing through the woods. It was so loud and moving incredibly fast. A few weeks later, we were outside and we heard some cracking in the woods. Then, it sounded like whatever it was stepped on one of those old glass coke bottles and broke it. Now, a woodland animal would not be able to do that. It's been reported around our area that there are monkey people living out in the woods. Many people have come back with the tales of seeing strange ape-like creatures while hunting. My mother and sister went outside one night and saw two big red eyes sitting under the apple tree they have just near the woods. It took off running, and my mom said it looked ape-like. She even says that she was driving home one day and looked off and toward the ditch and saw what she claims was a large, silver-looking ape-like creature. She said she was too scared to stop, so she kept going. I'm not sure why, what it was, but I know that since I was a little girl, we'd hear things out there. My dad is a skeptic, and even he admits there is something there. People come over late at night just to walk the wood line to see if they too could hear anything. We've thought about putting up a motion camera, but somehow the idea of actually knowing that it might be something really strange is worse than not knowing at all. There are other stories. A few years back, a good friend of mine says that he was hanging out with some people right down the road from where we live. They were in an old silo that had a medium-sized hole in the wall. He said that while they were sitting around a fire, they saw about ten sets of red eyes peering at them through the holes in the wall. Various holes, of course. A follow-up investigation report was done. I spoke with their witness at length by phone. This witness no longer lives at her parents' residence, where all the incidents have taken place, but is still curious, as is the rest of her family, to get some answers as to what might be causing the strange occurrences there. I have the following to add to the witness report. As some of the incidents were fairly recent, I arranged to make a visit on September 30th, 2006, to the witness's parents' residence. I talked at length with the witness's mother and sister, and they described the following additional incidents. One morning, right before sunrise, the witness's mother went outside and got into her vehicle to go to work. When she turned on the headlights, she saw a pair of red eyes and a dark shadow with two legs just inside the woods. She immediately went back into the house. On another occasion, the sister and some friends took a walk down the driveway, adjacent to the woods, late in the evening. One of the friends threw a stone into the woods, and soon afterward, a stone was thrown back at them. On still yet another occasion, a friend of the family arrived for a visit later in the evening, parking her car near the wood line. While everybody was inside, they heard a slight commotion up by her car. Upon investigating, found some unusually large footprints with large gait and light dusting of snow on the ground. These are just several of the incidents that have been occurring at this particular residence for a number of years. I personally did a walk through the woods where these noises had been reported to have come from. I also found that around approximately 20 acres of this particular woodlot, I did walk through the woods where the noises had been reported to have come from and also around the approximately 20 acres this particular woodlot covers. This wooded area is surrounded by farm fields, which 
are often then surrounded by more wooded parcels. The nearest neighbor is approximately half a mile away in the closest direction. An aerial view of the area shows a large wooded area of approximately three square miles with a mile distance from the residence. The general area is roughly 50% woods and 50% farm fields. There are water sources. Herds of deer have also been seen in the fields near the residence. While exploring the woods where the activities occurred, I did discover an unusual stick formation that, in my opinion, did not occur naturally. I also found a two inch diameter maple sapling that had been bent over, broken, probably within the last year. I also came across a three foot high sumac bush that had all been plucked of its branches, except for one. Upon that unplucked branch remained the bright red leaves. I made a mental note on how much it looked like a marker flag. That bush was in close proximity to a 15 foot high jack pine tree and between the sumac bush and the jack pine was a matted down area in the ground cover, which was within the circumference of the pine tree. Standing in that position, I could see through the branches of the jack pine over to the driveway, only 30 feet away. As the branches of the jack pine were sparse, I concluded that it would not make a good hiding space from passing cars, especially during daylight hours, but it could be quite concealing in darkness. Later on, I learned that after a field investigation, while talking with the witness's mother by phone, she had seen a dark figure in the light shine of her vehicle's headlights behind the jack pine, all while heading down the driveway back to the house one evening. I still remain in contact with the witness, who informs me of other strange activities at her parents' residence still. The activity there still remains very much active. This report focuses on the experiences of a witness who has had frequent and ongoing possible interactions with something in the woods here in Losco County. The area around this report contains the Aw Sable State Forest, containing 138 miles of the Aw Sable River as well as the Huron National Forest. The Manistee Forest were incorporated in 1945 and contain almost 1 million square miles and nearly 6,000 acres of collective wetlands. A casual look at the map of Michigan shows that the Manistee and Huron are not connected, but they share a vast array of rivers, swamps, and wildlife. I've been in contact with the witness, Mrs. R, and we have shared recordings and discussed similar experiences. Miss R wrote down her experiences and I have decided to present them here in her very own words. There were a few times when I deleted a place that might have been too descriptive or otherwise alter the narrative, but the great majority of the work is directly from the witness. My experiences happened in Removed, where I grew up. There is a lot of swampland and hundreds of acres of private and state areas out that way, especially upon growing up. My family owned a front 40 acres and a back 40 acres, which I eventually personally bought upon adulthood. My grandparents lived just down the road from us on their own ranch, also with plenty of acreage. Incidentally, I have a brother who had experiences on my grandfather's property that he told me. I always had horses, and I was the only one in my family who rode them. The horses would sometimes act spooked in the woods, and I would pass it off as horsey behavior. But it seemed to go on like this for years. I, myself, also had these spooky feelings in the woods when I was little. These feelings got a lot worse out in the back 40. It was really eerie out there, much more densely wooded. The only opening in the back 40 was an old pioneer homestead, which consisted of an indentation in the ground. My grandfather told me that it was where the old barn had been at one time. A few broken pieces of pottery, a bunch of lilac bushes, and an apple orchard. 
only when I was an adult in my 30s and watching TV one night that these eerie things finally made some sense. The first time that the eeriness seemed real was when I was about nine. So, in 1978-ish, I was walking with my girlfriend, neighbor, out in the back, 40. She was about four years older than me and much taller. Something growled really loud at us, and it was extremely scary. We picked up our pace as we're headed back from the front pasture. We didn't say much to each other, but just kept up a fast walk. We breathed a sigh of relief when we get to the front 40 and cross the gate into that pasture. We were in about 200 feet when something growled and then shrieked at us. How could have kept up with us without us hearing it? My friend turned to look and stated, Oh God, and grabbed the collar of my shirt, took off running down the trail with me in tow. We didn't stop until we reached the open barnyard and then the house. She was almost crying and then went home. I'm not sure what she saw and we never talked about it. Just about how scary the walk was in the woods that day. Just a couple of times, but not to anyone else. She would never go for a walk with me out there again and I have never seen or heard from her after she moved away. So anyway, through the years, I got so used to these feelings that I would just shrug them off. I would have the feeling of something following me, but I wasn't scared anymore. I used to see things out of the corner of my eye when I was younger, and I was so sure that something had been there, but then I couldn't see it. It was like things just disappeared behind trees or something like that. I knew it was nonsense, so eventually... I learned to just desensitize myself from spooks and learned to just enjoy the ride and my horse. Occasionally, people would go four-wheeling with their trucks, but for the most part, it was very quiet during the summers. I would ride my horses quite often out there from ages 9 to 17. There's a little-known route that a person could ride all the way through. I cannot count or come close to figuring out how many times that I had thought I had seen things, like dark shadows, or even heard f small footsteps that just did not belong. Everyone knows that deer have four legs and small hard feet, creating a very distinct tap, tap, tap as it walks through the woods. No animal out there that I know of can resemble the sound of a very heavy human walking. At other times, I would hear absolutely no noise at all but see dark motions among the trees in my peripheral. I would turn my head around and see nothing. So, eventually, I moved away. Then, come 1994, I bought the back 40 on a land contract. I believe it would have been the summer of 95 that my boyfriend and I decided to camp out at the back 40. We had a campfire and slept in a tent. In the middle of the night, we awoke to the sound of tree knocks, although at the time I had no clue as to what exactly a tree knock was. And my husband, having grown up in the country, also was startled. The sound can be described as this. Take a heavy, dry but solid branch, about four inches in diameter, and beat it as hard as you can into a live tree, at least a foot in diameter. Do this a total of four times, but leaving about two seconds between each knock. I asked my boyfriend, What was that? And he said, I don't know. I could tell he was scared, and that made me even more frightened. We laid awake for most of the remainder of the night. In 1997, we paid off the property in full and decided that we would put up a house in the orchid and move out of there. Getting there was not easy, it was the fall of 97 that I woke up one day to find my entire electric horse fence demolished on the west side. I looked over the horses carefully, but not one of them had a single scratch on them, let alone any cuts. Carefully, but it was strange. Weird. It was three strands of heavy gauge steel wiring. Where it was knocked down was right on the edge of a wild blackberry patch. So... Instead of the fence, 
you had apple trees, blackberry bushes, briars, thorns, and then fencing. I'm not sure exactly when it was, but it must have been sometime in the summer fall of 97. This is when I heard the wood knocks again. We did not have air conditioning in that house, so the windows were open. I was home alone and I could hear the knocking. It was near the west side of the house. I called my one brother, who was an avid hunter, and asked him, What makes a wood banging knocking noise out here in the woods? Kind of like two heavy wooden baseball bats being hit together. He told me it was just coon hunters trying to get the coons out of the trees. It was also in the fall of 97 that I noticed a dead animal smell coming from the end of the lane at the mailbox. Upon looking, I found four dead deer that had been there and leaves piled on top. After a week of investigating, I learned that the Losco Road Commission had been using the private lane for years and years as a dumping ground for roadkill. The last thing that ever happened was the 4th of July in 2003. My family had all gone to see the fireworks in town, but I decided to stay at my parents' house. It was a hectic day as all my brothers and their families were also visiting my parents for the holiday. I was sitting peacefully on my parents' back deck and I could hear the fireworks in town, far off in the distance, right behind my parents' home. I heard something crash through the woods, whooping like a crazy drunk man. Why is he running through the woods in the dark? Doesn't he have anyone to visit or be with right now? How is he going to find his way back through all that forest? Why would he even be this far out in the woods this late at night? My name is Alan. On about mid-November 2012, I had a very unusual experience that, at first, kept me very mixed up, but always stayed in my mind until I started doing research. It was about 2 to 3 a.m. in the morning. I awoke to go outside and have a smoke. The area of the town of Bath, New York, is semi-rugged. Hundreds of huge foothills. There is vast amounts of forests, lakes, ponds, wildlife, and many state parks. Much of the land is posted, no hunting. The hills are also super steep, so climbing or hiking can be difficult. We rented out the full basement apartment of a home. Our entryway was in the back of the home semi-underground. There was a deck over our entryway. I am an ex-U.S. Army Intel, a special tasking veteran who served in Central America and the Middle East. I'm telling you this because I am a trained observer and weigh out everything I see. I am super aware of my surroundings. That morning, I went outside lit up a cigarette. It was very dark this night and cool. Deer would constantly wander through, and many times, I could be ten feet from a deer and be silent as to not spook them. As I lit up my smoke, movement caught my attention about roughly a hundred yards directly in front of me to the east. A cinnamon brownish colored figure was pacing back and forth over and over, on each side of this set, there's this clear cut and a couple of homes. This thing was at the far end by the next tree line, pacing back and forth, moving towards the last home, and back again, moving approximately north to south, then back the other way. It was moving erratically, pacing like it was confused or undecided if it wanted to go closer. As I looked at first, I thought... Was it drunk? But in all the years I've lived there, I have never seen anybody out there. As I watched, what really caught my attention was that it looked like it was floating across the ground as there was absolutely no head bob at all. The ground rose between myself and this entity and went back down to its side, so I could not see the lower legs good. It kept on pacing back and forth for maybe three minutes. At the position I was under, in the shadows, I was not observed by this creature, thankfully. I'm not afraid of too much, but for some reason, the hair stood up on the back of my neck, 
and I got into what I call combat mode. I wanted to bellow out at this entity, but something said to not do that. Around three to four minutes of this thing pacing, I turned my head for a second. Bam! It's gone. I got a fearful sense of where this thing went, and had a feeling it might try to flank me around the two homes. So, I went into the house and awakened my wife, and I told her, there's something weird out there. I did not think of Bigfoot right away, because it was not the Patty type I seen on the Patterson and Gimli film. I also thought that they're in the Northwest, not really here in New York State. It was maybe seven feet tall, a much slimmer build, white on top, and slimmer than Patty, more like a fine-tuned athlete than a bodybuilder. Long arms and an awfully long shaggy head of hair, which stood out to me too. Very weird. The reason I even saw it was because there was a light on that home as he was pacing towards and that lit it up and some of the other area. Upon seeing it, after the fact, I realized that there was a hedgerow running parallel to it and a large ravine behind that that ran into the woods. Across from this property was a road a couple mobile homes, then a very steep wooded foothill, or a small mountain. For years this has baffled me, and I cannot get this out of my mind until I visited the BFRO and seen at least six reports entirely around this whole area. I was letting my dogs out to go to the bathroom before leaving for work. It was about 3.30 a.m., I drive an hour to work and get there by five, so that's why I was up so early. All was quiet and peaceful. Heard an owl off in a tree line. Then, about five minutes later, I hear, off in the distance, something I never heard before. I hear coyotes all the time, and I've heard a bobcat screaming before. But this, this was far different. It sounded like it was quite always off, whatever it was, but sounded very big, very deep. The only way I could think to explain the noise was like a big, burly man yelling, Ah! for about five to ten seconds long. Then nothing else. It caused a neighbor dog down the road to start barking, but did not seem to phase my dogs. That direction the noise came from is about two to three miles of a combination of timber and farmland, then becomes a big river bottom of the Grand River. I don't think whatever made the noise was two to three miles away, maybe a mile. I have never heard anything like that before in my life, and believe me, I've been an outdoor guy my whole life. I've watched multiple different Bigfoot shows, heard vocalizations on them, and that is the closest thing I can think of is what it sounded like. However, I feel like recorded things on TV don't properly give you the same feel or power this thing seemed to have. I mean, it sent chills down my spine. If it would have been closer, I definitely would have gone inside for a gun. This happened in Plain, Washington, right on the Chihuahua River Road. My name you can just call me Nelson. I stay and live here in a travel trailer at Thousand Trails, Leavenworth, Washington. However, the resort is 18 miles away from Leavenworth, outside of Plain. I was awoken by a sound. No clue what woke me, but with it being Memorial Day weekend and many in the campground, I just assumed it was somebody being loud and it woke me. I didn't really hear what woke me, so, I laid my head back down on the pillow. About three minutes later, I heard something, but I was already awake and sat up in my bed, listening. My first thought, it was a Bigfoot, or a yell. It seemed so distant, but so filling of the entire forest and valley. I said to myself, Nah, it must be some humans partying or yelling at a cabin on a hill, or in another section of the campground. Then, within another 30 seconds, another one 
while I was still sitting up. Head by the open window, in complete darkness. No other human noise. Quiet time and all are sleeping, and no human could possibly make this noise, as we simply cannot transmit what I will call depth and broadness of that kind of distance. It felt like it was coming miles away, but it wasn't directional. This howl could penetrate walls or obstructions, it felt like. This was beyond weird, unsettling, while still kind of exciting. Anyhow, that's what I heard. Also, I noticed I believed I had seen footprints in the snow just this last winter. I did take a photo, but not sure if I still have it, since I changed phones, so hoping backup in cloud does. This is to document my experience on Sunday, June 6, 2021, in Hoopa, California, right alongside Shoemaker Road, Cherry Flat Road. Something woke me up from dreaming. I was dreaming and I was trying to sleep, but there was noise outside, so in my dream, I got out of bed, went to my window, and pulled back the curtain. I began tapping on the window to let whoever was outside know they were being too noisy and disrupting my effort to try and sleep. After my third tap on the window, I woke up from my dream, realized I had to go to the bathroom. I get up, made my way to the toilet. My bedroom window was open and my bathroom window was open. Just before I flushed, I hear a faint noise. I began to think it was a motorcycle coming around the bend on the highway. And in that second, I thought to myself, who would be riding a motorcycle this early in the morning? Then, the noise got louder and drawn out, and had a deep, vibrating howl. Then it stopped. I realized then that it was something I had never heard before, and it was not human. It sounded like it was on one of the mountains far beyond my house. Anyway, I noticed there were no dogs barking, not even my dogs, and there weren't even crickets. It was dead silence. I was telling myself, did, did I hear what I think I heard? I headed back to bed and noticed the clock said 3.33 a.m. I asked my husband if he was awake. He had been snoring when I was in the bathroom. I told him, I just heard something. I explained the sound to him, and I said, I think it's a Bigfoot. I could not believe what I had heard. I could not sleep for over an hour, and we laid in bed, waiting for more howling, but there was none. The next day when I told everybody in the house, nobody had heard it. Later that Sunday morning, I used my phone to Google different animal sounds to try and find the same howl that I heard. I tried it all. Mountain lion. Wolf, Fisher, Fox. None of them are in the least bit similar. Then, I googled Bigfoot Howls. The 1994 Ohio Moaning Howl is almost exactly what I heard. I got chills when I listened to it. I played the recording to my household, and my oldest adult son recognized the sound also. He as well has a few of his friends and they have their own experiences, too, including but not limited to a rock being thrown. He has the rock in his bedroom. I phoned my other family members, told them what I experienced, and my mom. She told me there was a post on Facebook about a week ago from somebody that lives a few blocks away. They were returning home late at night near the local dump between Hoopa and Willow Creek. Apparently, she thought she saw something near the highway, and so did the car behind her, as the other car turned around and drove back. This location is only a couple of mountains away from where my home is located. I figured the Bigfoot traveled to Hoopa from the dump site. I have lived in this area, Hoopa, California, almost my entire life, and I have never heard such a howl. I think about the experience almost daily but I actually feel fortunate to have witnessed this rare creature howling. While living with my parents, 
at Manton, California in the years of 1987 to 1989. We begin hearing strange howls intermittently from around 9 p.m. to midnight, roughly two to three times a week. My father said that their crazy neighbor must have gotten hold of an old World War II air raid siren. I think he said so that as to not scare the kids. It was definitely not the local volunteer fire department siren. Not until several years later did we happen to hear a recording of the infamous Ohio Howl. Exactly the same sound. It made the hair on the back of my neck stand on end to recognize it. My husband and grown children also recognized it too and said, that's the sound we used to hear at Manton. Looking back, I realized the sound came from a cleared swath going up the hill along the penstock of the power lines. At the time, not many people lived in the area. So, overloaded with wildlife, game, cougars, and water. I also noticed that several years later, there was a large wildfire in the same area. A friend's daughter was on the mop-up fire crew. Her mother told me she had mentioned seeing a monkey up in a pine tree. I told her it was not a monkey, and yes, they are there. During a little camping trip along the North Fork of the Coeur d'Alene River, we had recently finished dinner. While sitting fireside our dogs, a border collie and a pug leapt up and ran into the forest that separated the campsite from the creek. Neither made any sound, but simply ran into the woods at twilight. Frustrated at the thought of chasing dogs in the woods at night, I retrieved my flashlight from the cab of my truck. Upon approaching the tree line, the dogs exploded out of the woods and ran to the truck, where they then cowered in fear, staring off into the trees. My initial fear was we were dealing with a cougar, or much more serious, a bear. I quickly retrieved my pistol from the console, instructing my girlfriend to put more wood on the fire. We managed to get the dogs out of the canopied bed where they had taken shelter and placed them into a spare tent. I approached the forest. While skinning the trees with my flashlight, I caught sight of a large black Sasquatch standing behind a tree approximately 30 feet in front of me. I retreated back away from the woods and after a few moments, sat in my chair, flashlight and pistol in lap. Initially, the hope was that it would simply go away. My girlfriend was sitting about four feet away and after shouting to the forest that I was armed and would shoot if threatened. A large rock, eight inches long and five inches wide, I still have the rock, came tumbling out of the trees and went between us, grazing the top of the fire as it passed, causing hot coals and sparks to fly against my dining canopy. We both jumped up out of surprise, while trying to keep an eye on the forest. I was then able to extinguish the hot coals, burning the grass and canopy with an open soda. Out of fear and disgust, I fired two rounds from the revolver into the air at a 45 degree angle. The creature then moved off to our left crunching undergrowth as it moved, then stopped. We heard a large crack-like sound. It was that of a tree snapping. Then, the creature moved off to the right, where it crossed the creek, at this point where I had originally seen it. It made two loud splashes in the water, moving to the opposite shore where it was heard to be moving noisily up the hillside, opposite our camp. We hastily gathered our more expensive gear, tossing it into the truck, leaving our tents, coolers, and other various items. We put the dogs in the cab, extinguished the fire, and abandoned camp. Forty-five minutes home to Coeur d'Alene, returning the following morning to retrieve the remainder of our equipment. I found the large stone and kept it. We also discovered the tree snap was actually a twin pine, about five inches in diameter, that was also broken about six feet up from the ground. No prints were seen as the ground was packed hard due to heavy use that summer. The creek was also 
reporting high. A follow-up investigation report was done. I spoke to the witness by phone. The witness and his girlfriend both set up camp with a spare tent as more people were to come later in the camping trip. The only other camp was one quarter mile away. They had cooked steaks and oysters for dinner. When the dogs came running back from the trees, they were whimpering. The witness had his flashlight on, figure for at least two seconds, and knew it was not a bear. It was leaning out from behind an approximately two foot diameter pine tree. He saw the right side of the upper body. The lower body was covered by bushes. He estimates the shoulder width at four feet based on the tree diameter. The right arm hung down into the bushes, so no hand was seen. It was eight feet tall, with smooth, shiny black hair, about three inches long. The head was conical, with no neck. The nose was broad, not a bare snout. Hair from the head hung down to the eyes. No ears or teeth were seen. No eye shine either. The skin on the face was black. No foul odor was detected. He used the words bulky and enormous to describe this figure. When the rock was thrown, it hits the sticks in the fire, sparks landing on the side of the dining canopy. He stated he would never shoot at it, but shot into the air, and they continued to hear it move around, and also a tree break. The entire encounter was about 45 minutes. He and his girlfriend were very frightened, even though he felt it would not harm them. It affected him for a long time, and he has since been sharing the encounter for the past couple of years. I was deer hunting off Highway 24 near Rhodestown, North Carolina, right outside of Jacksonville. I had been in my stand since about three that afternoon. It was close to dark, and I saw a deer walking along the edge of the clearing that I was in. It kept looking into the woods like it was curious of something. The steer got closer, and I took the shot. When I did, it took off running, hit some brush, and fell down. I waited about 30 minutes, and it got up. That's when it started getting dark. I got out of my stand, went to go get the deer. I got my things together, and started dragging my deer to my truck. This was roughly a quarter mile through a thick part of woods that I was hunting in. I was carrying my rifle, backpack, the deer, and a flashlight in my mouth. So this way, I could pull the deer by its leg, hold my rifle and backpack straps. After walking through the thick part of the woods, it was a straight shot to my truck. I dropped the deer's leg to get situated and get myself together to continue my walkout. When I looked up, with my light still in my mouth, I saw two eyes looking back at me. They looked wider than any animal I had ever seen at night. I've been hunting all my life. I have also seen everything from deer to coyote to bear. These set of eyes were about my height. I'm 5'10". The trail I was on was slightly downhill. This thing stared at me long enough for me to put my rifle and backpack down. I had a 9mm Glock with me, and I pulled it out. I shot once into the ground next to me to get whatever it was to get out of the trail. It did not move or flinch. It just simply looked to its left and looked back to me. I looked down to take a knee because I was getting worried. I got on my knee, looked back up, and it walked off to its left, into some of the thickest woods I have seen. I grabbed the deer continued dragging it towards my truck. When I got to the spot where I thought I saw the eyes, I looked at both sides of the trail, and I swear, I could smell this musky foul odor and where it had walked off the trail. Tree limbs and trees were pushed over, as if something huge had just barged through the thicket. I went to my truck, cleaned the deer out there in the woods, like another post on here that I read. I felt like I was watched the whole time I was cleaning the deer. I left the ribcage and spine of the deer I cleaned out there, along with the hide. When I came back to the same spot, the spine had been drug off, about 300 yards from where I left it. 
It was easily one of the strangest and creepiest nights I have ever had in the woods by myself. I experienced this incident while living on a military base in North Carolina. I was approximately 14 or 15 years old at the time. I'm 50 now. However, the incident is still fresh in my memory. At the time, there was nothing for a young boy to do. So, my favorite pastime was wandering the military res, searching for discarded sea rations, as we never had enough to eat in the house. There were eight people in my family. One day, I skipped school to go sea ration hunting. I'll never forget it. It was very warm and sunny, which for North Carolina is not unusual for a fall day. We used to call it an Indian summer. I had been wondering the deeper recesses of the res and was quite proud of the fact that not only had I stumbled across an old farmstead that the Marine Corps had condemned in order to take the land, but had a pretty good supply of discarded sea rations. Realizing it was getting late, I had better get home. I had a tank trail made by the Marines for the vehicles to use. I was getting closer to home, so I decided to leave the trail and shortcut it through the woods. I knew this particular area and always avoided it because it was known as a Pocosin, which in local terms meant an area that is real dense and swampy. As I made my way, Something really seemed out of the ordinary. All day, I was used to hearing the sounds of the forest. Birds, frogs, squirrels, and chattering and whatnot was great. Not seeing another human being. Now I was quiet. It did not seem so natural. Something made me stop. And to this very day, I am perplexed about this. I don't know why, because at that age, you have no fear, as you think you're going to live forever. I had no fear this time either. However, I felt that I was being watched. I have never had this feeling again. So, I slowly began to turn my head to the right when I caught a glimpse of something brown. My first thought was, oh, it's only a deer. I stood stock still, kept looking at the brown patch. It didn't move. It was in a very dense part of the Pocosin, and my second thought was maybe it's not a deer, but possibly a discarded Marine Corps field jacket. Now, that would be a treasure. As I began to move towards the object, I seemed to hear the crashing of brush first. Then, that brown patch moved, only it moved higher. I estimate a height of between 8 and 10 feet. As it grew in height, it also grew broader exposing more of itself. I never saw its head or any real features, other than the long fur because the thing was moving so fast that I was amazed how any animal of that size could do that. The crashing of the branches and underbrush was so loud. All I could do was stand there. I don't know how or why I remained that long in that position. All I remember is the sounds of the forest returned that's what snapped me back to the present. I have only recalled this story once and was told never again to repeat it to anybody or go back into those woods. I have never returned to that area to this day. In early October of 1983, I was recently married and stationed at Camp Lejeune, North Carolina. Neither my wife nor I had ever been to Wilmington. So, one Saturday, we made a trip there. We saw some sights, did some shopping and had dinner, went to a late movie. While driving back to the camp, on US 17, just north of the town of Holly Ridge, I noticed a very large figure on the right shoulder ahead. It was walking upright and I assumed it was a bear. I slowed down in order to avoid hitting it. It should go down on all four legs and flee. I was going perhaps 10 miles an hour or less when I finally realized that what I was approaching was not a bear. 
The creature I saw was massive, maybe seven to eight feet tall, and I'd estimate 600 pounds or more. The hair was a lighter brownish color and appeared long in its length. I could see its face very clearly. What struck me at the time, and even to this day, is the creature appeared to be oblivious to its surroundings and seemed deep in thought. It never gave any indication that he was aware of the car approaching, nor did the bright headlights seem to cause it any discomfort. It just kept moving around at a slow pace looking straight ahead. I finally passed the creature at nearly walking speed. I assumed I had to have been mistaken or could not have seen what I thought, so I stopped the car. I looked back out the rear window and can see the creature still walking southbound in the glow of the stop lamps of the car. I woke up my wife and had her look. She did look, but said it just must have been a bear. At that point, I let it go, resumed my northbound trip back to Jacksonville. One other thing is to note that my impression was the creature was clean in the sense that its hair was not matted, nor in tufts. The hair was straight and laid flat against its body. It seemed to vary in length from a couple of inches to maybe five. There was no hair on the face which was a bit lighter in complexion than the fur surrounding it. My wife, who was sleeping in the passenger seat of the car, is the only witness, and I woke her up just after passing. She could see the figure in the brake lights, but explained it had to have been a bear. A follow-up investigation was done. I interviewed the witness, observer by phone on January 9th, 2012. This sighting occurred at approximately 1 a.m. on Sunday, October 2nd, 1983. The weather being clear, dry, and temperature in the mid-60s. Observer and his wife recalled driving north on North Carolina 17, approximately one to two miles past the town of Holly Ridge, when they approached what the witnesses initially thought was a large bear. Illuminated in the car headlights, the witness clearly remembers a massive, hairy, bipedal animal walking south on the right shoulder of the road, in opposition to his direction of travel. Length of observation time was about 15 seconds. Witness describes the animal's height in the range of 7 to 8 feet tall, with weight estimated at 600 pounds. Hair color was brown, with reddish highlights and about 2 inches or more in length. He slowed his vehicle to a crawl, and was able to observe most of the upper body features, particularly the face, very clearly. He recalls it as different from an ape's face, more elongated, hairless around the eyes and cheeks. Facial skin was described as reddish, chocolate-colored, and lighter than surrounding hair. No beard or other lengthy head hair was detected. The head was large, sloped back to the top, and the forehead area between the brow line and top of the head, estimated to about six to seven inches. The brow was hair-covered and very prominent. The eyes were darker, elliptical-shaped, and fixed forward. The nose was hairless, but not massive or wide. Nostrils were visible. The mouth was wide and hairless. The neck was not prominent. An observer described the head as blending into the shoulders. He describes the body as stocky, somewhat muscular, and shoulder to shoulder, measurement was thought to be approximately three feet wide. The torso was hair covered and chest muscles not overly prominent. No female breasts were observed, thus leaving witness with the opinion that this was a male animal. Animals were described as hair covered excessively long and extended to the animal's knees. Hands were described as balled up and hairless. Clenched hands were darker color than the face. No finger length estimate or nail description could be accurately recalled. Thighs were described as muscular, about twice the girth of an adult human. 
Observer did not remember any details of the lower legs or feet. No odor was detected, although the windows of the car were rolled up during the event. The Observer also states that during his experience, the animal simply ignored the car, was unaffected by the headlights or occupants, and continued moving south as if it were on a mission. Its gaze remained forward as it moved past his vehicle, never turning its head to look in any other direction. The witness states that the animal moved in a moderate walking pace. Its arms were swinging in a normal biped manner. It issued no vocalizations, made no audible footfalls, nor could he hear it breathing. It did not appear to be injured or carrying any visible items. No other travelers were on the road during this experience. His wife was asleep in the passenger seat and did not observe the animal. The witness was not threatened during the event. In fact, he remembers feeling amazed, mesmerized, and unafraid of this huge animal. I've never told this to anyone because I didn't want to hear the jokes, but it was mid-July, 1987. I was heading toward the beach in my sports car, top-down music blasting. It was around 8.45 p.m., so it was still light out, sort of dusk. I had my headlights on, cruising at about 60 miles an hour, right when I rounded a corner. And there in the road stood this large, hairy thing. I slammed on the brakes, swerving around it. I must have glanced it because it bounced over the passenger side of my car. I slid the car around, stopped where my headlights were, about halfway on the thing. It got up and came at me. I was about 25 feet away from the thing, and the smell was atrocious. It hung in the air like a wet blanket. It was away from this thing, and the smell was awful, like I said. It was about seven to seven and a half feet high, reddish-brown, matted-looking hair. The face was hairless, and he looked ticked. I quickly put the car in reverse, backed up, threw the car in drive, taking off. As I was spinning around, I quickly looked in the rearview mirror, and it was right on my car's rear end. I hear a loud bang. About that time, my car traction and I took off. I left the creature running down the road after me. I have never been so scared in all my life. After I got to my destination, I checked my vehicle. The passenger rear quarter panel was dented in with hair on it. My rear spoiler was shattered where he had hit the rear of my car. I told my friends, family, police, and insurance that I had hit a stray cow. But it took weeks to get that smell off the outside of my car, and the inside still had that same putrid stench. It was an undersmell, like sewage and something really foul. I was 27 then. I'm 38 now. I have not been down that road since, and I will drive 45 to 50 miles out of my way not to go that route. I have always wanted to tell this story to somebody, and after reading report after report, finally, I feel like I have the nerve to tell it. I live in Carteret, and at the time, worked in Snead's Ferry, also in Onslow County, and the commute to work every day took me, took me through Camp Lejeune via the back gate. As I made the turn on a Highway 17, off of Highway 172, I noticed that what I thought was a bear sitting down under a huge pecan tree on the right, since there was about, I don't know, 50 or 60 feet distance between me and the bear, I decided to pull off to the side of the road and watch him for a moment. It was a warm July morning, and I had the windows of my truck rolled down. As usual, I noticed the most ungodly smell I had ever experienced. It was like rotten eggs, mixed with sulfur 
and sewage. As I sat and watched, I quickly realized that this was no bear. As the creature stood up from a crouched position, walked over to the pecan tree, and began violently shaking it. I was floored by what I was watching. Understand that this tree is immense, and the creature had no problem shaking the pecans from it. Pecans that are still in the green holes, by the way. I wanted a better look at it, since the whole sighting was, well, its back was to me, so I put my truck in first gear, ready to bug out if I need to and blow the horn. Suddenly, it stops, completely frozen still, with its back still to me. It stayed like that till I laid down on the horn about 10 seconds later, and it slowly turned and looked right at me. And that's when my heart decided to do the 50-yard dash in 2.3 seconds. I couldn't see its face, but it stood about 8 to 10 feet tall. Its hair was very long and matty. It stared at me for what seemed like an eternity and made this awful loud screeching noise, tearing off into the woods. The sprint from the tree into the woods was about 30 yards or so, and it took him no time to reach them. I'm talking split seconds. On my way home that day, I decided to stop again. Though the creature was gone, I could still smell that ungodly mix of stench. To this day, when I pass by that pecan tree, my heart still races. I've lived out here for so long now, I couldn't even begin to tell you when it all really started. Probably going back to when I was just a child, I would have visions and dreams of these large, hairy, hominid-like creatures coming into my house at night, taking me and my parents to this strange place that I was not familiar with. It was almost like some strange supernatural premonition of what was going to happen. See, as I got older, things really began to take a turn. My parents and I owned quite a bit of acreage out in the boondocks out in Oklahoma. They weren't farmers of any kind, just enjoyed having a lot of space to move around. Having property and privacy of our own meant pretty much everything to my parents. I can't blame them. I'm the same way now that I'm also an adult. As the dream started, things began happening around our place. All around the property, actually. There'd be times in the evenings we'd hear our livestock and horses just go absolutely bonkers, neighing as if something was seriously wrong. But upon checking on it, my father was never able to find the source of any direct problems. Only a lingering stench that filled the entirety of the area. Like this sulfuric rotten egg smell mixed with garbage and thick body odor. It always seemed to linger in the evenings more than anything else. It was mainly stuff like that happening all around our property until one time I was only a boy when it first started. I want to say I was maybe eight or nine and my father had asked me to do something. What it was, looking back, I can't quite remember. But I do remember. I was walking down towards the fence line to probably fix something, maybe grab something. As I'm walking toward it, I'm now about 30 feet away from the fence when I see movement just in the tree line just beyond the fence. As the movement happens, I look up out of reaction and see this large what I can only describe as a hairy man standing there holding onto the tree staring at me the first thing that intimidated me most was the outright size of this person or so I thought it was at first absolutely massive huge body covered in hair being only 8 or 9 years old I don't even think I was 5 feet yet this thing was easily double my height and built like a car. I'll never forget the face. Most people always want to ask me 
what does Bigfoot's face look like? Many of the online depictions are pretty accurate, actually, since there seem to be varying degrees of different kinds of Bigfoots and what their faces look like. This one had a very wide mouth, a very pronounced brow ridge, very pronounced, I should say, and a very bold, human-like nose. The eyes were very dark and set in the skull, so I didn't see them that well, but they appeared more like a gorilla's would be, very dark, except these were almost black. And this creature, or being, was just staring into my soul, like, what are you doing here? You're not supposed to be over here. Almost as if I had caught it doing something. I froze right in my tracks, and I quickly retracted my steps, while never taking my eyes off this thing. Maybe after a short distance, I turned and fled, in fear of my life, after seeing something like this. Of course, getting back to my house, I knew I could not tell my parents. They wouldn't believe me. In fact, I'd probably get punished. But as time would go on, those specific months, my parents would have their own sightings too, I would later find out. And even I myself would have more sightings of the same creature, off in the tree line, always watching me, everything from doing yard work to just working on outside the house, even playing. It disturbed me greatly, made me fearful of going to certain parts of our property. That's when one night, things changed. This whole thing had been going on for maybe six, seven months, and we started off in early spring. I remember because that fence incident that I just explained was still a little bit cold and rainy. It was maybe March, and now this would bleed into October. I remember this as well. The leaves were starting to turn and change. That's probably the only reason I can remember an accurate time frame. While well, all these encounters, sightings, strange things have been going on all over our property. The smells, the animals freaking out. My parents seeing this thing, I seeing this thing, would all lead up to this one night. I was laying in bed one night, probably drifting off to sleep, or at least trying to. It was maybe 8.30 at night, and I see something large approaching my window, only from the light or the lack of light now blocking, being obstructed by something large. In that moment, I didn't realize that's what it was. So I sat up, kind of in a daze because I was in that half asleep, half awake mode. And I turned to look at the window and I see this face standing right in my window, looking down at me. And it had these glowing eyes not like a deer's would be in the headlights. They had this natural glow to them. It was like a horror costume. Gosh, the thoughts of it just bring back chills. I knew immediately it was the same creature I had been seeing. But now, instead of these dark black eyes like it featured before, the eyes were glowing. Kind of like a deep yellow orange is the best I can describe it. This thing then puts its face up against my window, presses firmly, and kind of does this ugly grin, kind of like a I'm gonna get you look on its face. I'm terrified. I don't know what else to do. I kind of just sit there, frozen. This thing quickly retracts its head, turns it left, turns it right, looks back at me, grins with a very sinister look, and disappears. Now, I have no idea what's going on. I can immediately start to hear it moving around the house. Then, I hear movement on the other end of the house. To my horror, that's when I realized there was more than one of them. There were several of these things going all around my house. There had to be three, maybe four, judging by the amount of footsteps I was hearing and noise. Then, I hear the front door and back door rattling at the same time, violently, as if someone or something 
was trying their hardest to get in the house. I'm not sure at one point I started crying, but I know I was definitely sobbing by this point. At one point or another, since time seemed to slow down to a screeching halt, I heard my father from the other room start screaming. He jumps out of bed, runs out of the hallway. I hear the front door fly open. Bam! 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 Followed by more screaming. Bam! I don't even know what to think. My eight-year-old brain can barely process what is even happening right now. I can't even begin to think that this is truly reality. Maybe a minute or two goes by, and silence falls over the entirety of the house. My father comes rushing in my room, gun in hand, and he is white as a sheet. I've never seen my dad so scared ever in my life, and he's a pretty hearty man. His eyes were as wide as saucers. He quickly tells me, without saying much, get up, jump in the bunker, now. Okay, so we had a basement. Down in the basement, my dad had a tornado shelter built, right underneath the basement. So, you would go down to the basement, open a small hatch door, and down into almost, I guess you would call it a secondary basement. I fled. Without turning, I ran out of my room, past my dad, down into the basement, down into the shelter. I closed the hatch. A few more minutes of silence. Bam! 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 My dad firing off his twenty-two, Or, I think it was a twenty-two. It was probably a different rifle, to be honest. Because, let's be honest, I don't think a twenty-two would do much against these things. But I always remember him keeping his assortment of guns by the front door, and the twenty-two was his go-to. He had other weapons and guns, but I don't remember which, or what kind. Sorry. Things eventually fell silent, and after some time, after sitting down there, all by myself, completely terrified, these things had broken in, killing both of my parents. My dad opens up the hatch, tells me it's safe to come out. I come out, and I asked him, Dad, what were those things? He just looks at me sternly, doesn't say much. He explains I'm going to be going to go stay with some family for a little while, just until it's safe here. And that was when I moved in with my aunt and uncle, just for a few months, both of whom I was very close with. Before I went there, my parents both had a very lengthy phone conversation with both of them over the phone, letting them know there was an issue at home, and it needed to be dealt with properly. Being only eight years old, you don't really think to press your parents about the specifics of these issues like what had just happened that night. What I saw, and if we're honest, I never really dealt with it. I mean, sure, I went on with life like everybody else through any traumatic event or tragedy, but I never sat down and tried to decode it for my own brain. I just simply went on, as they say. After spending a few quick months at my aunt's, I came back, probably about December, it was before Christmas. I remember that. My parents both claimed that the issue had been dealt with. Always making sure to be vague and never saying too much about what the issue was. Being my age, I was so scared of the issue. I didn't want to press it. And after that, things seemed to be better. We no longer had any more sightings of these things, at least that I was aware of. Come the following spring and summer, I didn't have any sightings myself, but our livestock would start disappearing. Not just a dog, or a cat, or a chicken or goat. I'm talking horses would just vanish, out of the blue. We had one mare that my dad was really in love with. One day, just gone. Completely just no trace of it ever. Missing from the stable. And then shortly after, my gifted Australian shepherd from my uncle, named Bono, 
because he loved you two so much. That's who he named the puppy after. That dog disappeared as well. No trace. One day she was there. The next, she was gone. As an adult, I reflect back on these things and realize we were under attack by some sort of tribe of Bigfoot creatures. That's my only conclusion. I hope this story finds you well. Please, contact me. Let me know if you have any questions that your viewers might want to know. Thank you for your time. This story will be more quick and concise. There's not a lot to it, but I would still like to tell my story. A good friend of mine lost their dog a while back, and I was helping them look for him. We were standing out in the woods, and he was going to go down this one part of trail where he believes his dog went down. I decided I would wait by the car. It was evening. I'm not much of a woods person anyway so I figured they would have better luck. I was just there for more emotional support than anything. My friend leaves down the trail, calling his dog's name in search of the animal. So I'm standing there thinking, now might be a great time for a cigarette. When I start to hear rustling in the trees next to me, I turn to look, thinking it was my friend coming back. But instead, I see a large shadow, kind of darting behind a tree, and I'm thinking, what the? So I'm looking closer and closer, and I can make out whatever this thing was, was a dark, hairy, ape-like form that was walking on two legs, a biped. So I slowly tense up and begin to backtrack towards the car, which was only about a few feet away from me anyway. I was terrified. I did not know what it was, what sort of animal this could have been. Immediately, my rational brain tried to explain things. This is obviously just a black bear. No reason to be concerned. Yeah, black bears can be a threat, but as long as you ignore it, it will ignore you, right? I mean, it's not like I had any food on me at the time. But then... Before my brain could finish this thought and process it, and try to rationalize the situation, this ape-like face pops its head out from behind the tree, looking at me. The only thing I remember were its deep black eyes, staring back at me, before quickly darting back behind the tree, disappearing. I almost lost it. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go sit in the car and wait for my friend to come back since it was his car and he had the keys. But we were going nowhere. I was a sitting duck. I jumped in the car, locked all the doors, sat there nervously waiting for him to come back. Then, not even 60 seconds goes by and the car becomes getting pelt with rocks. Not large rocks, little ones. I kept hearing these little ding, ting ting sounds and I would see these small stones being thrown from the trees where I saw this thing. This kept going on all the way until my friend came back. Maybe 30 minutes later, he could not find his dog, so we just jumped in the car. Of course, he never asked why I was so scared and why I was so clammed up, and I tried not to make it an issue. I didn't say anything about it. I didn't tell him anything about what I saw or experienced. We drove a little few miles away, and eventually found his dog later that evening. The only real reason those dog details are relevant is because, for whatever reason, I feel like that Bigfoot creature had something to do with it. At least, I firmly believe that what I encountered that evening was indeed a Bigfoot. Having never been a believer before, that evening changed my perspective and my life. My name is going to be kept anonymous for the sake of the story. It was in the year 2006, and I was employed as a forest ranger patrolling the west end of the Fort Apache Indian Reservation. I was sitting by the side of the road, right before the start of the airport. I was waiting for woodcutters to return, so 
I could check their permits. At this time, it was roughly sundown, but it was still light enough to see. I noticed a creature which resembled a man but covered in black hair. Unlike the Bigfoot reports, this creature was about an average height and I estimated the weight to be around 200 pounds. I thought I was seeing things. The creature crossed from the northeast and headed west above a school. It crossed by so fast that by the time it crossed the road, I was stunned. I drove toward the direction the creature crossed, hoping to get a better look, but it had already crossed into a goalie. I was afraid nobody would believe me, so I kept it to myself. I don't know if what I saw was a juvenile Bigfoot, but whatever it was seemed to disappear, and the creature did not seem to know I was there since it crossed about a hundred yards in front of me. I was backed up off the road. It was scary. I did not want to get on my unit. I was out for a run a couple of weeks ago. During my cool down, I noticed what might be some footprints in the dried mud. I have pictures. We'll send them if needed. Most of the area is flat, with some surrounding hills and low trees, like juniper, oak, etc. I'm unsure whether or not these are actual tracks due to the many other obvious boot and shoe prints in the same area, but a few of the tracks have what looks like toe impressions and are all fairly large, all of which were bigger than my size 13 shoe. There is also a sighting reported in the same area, October 2006, Navajo County. I live right behind that school and about a half mile away from the old airport. I've heard numerous stories, including one about two months before, of three people seeing one of these creatures cross the road, and people also seeing a Sasquatch near the school dumpsters. On approximately April 22nd, 2014, I was at a place called Fool's Hollow Lake near Sholo, Arizona. I was out on the lake around the bend fishing where a storm was starting to roll in from the east. As the storm was getting closer, I was becoming more uncomfortable, so I decided to start heading in. I was heading west when I spotted what I thought was a brown bear down on all fours drinking water from the edge of the lake. These are my approximate coordinates. When I first spotted the creature, it was very close off. Close off the point at a bend of the lake. The lake has a sideways L shape, and as I got closer to the creature, still thinking it was a large black bear, I saw it stand up on its two hind legs and look towards me. The creature then turned and walked into the wooded area. That's where I lost sight of it. The small time frame in which I did see the creature walking depicted very similar to the Patterson video. This creature was about seven to eight feet taller in arm length, reaching toward its mid-thigh, walking with a very long stride and hunch. The creature also appeared to have a reddish-brown color, fewer shades darker than an orangutan. After losing sight, I was unable to catch it in my sight again. With a storm right behind me and lightning all around, I did not want to be on the lake in a 12-inch aluminum boat. So, I headed back to shore, ending that little fiasco. A follow-up investigation report was done. I had spoken to the witness twice by phone to go over more details of this report. Prior to the sighting, he had trouble starting his motor. With that and the incoming storm, he did not want to investigate the location and decided to get back to the launch. Having made several trips to this lake in the past, he was very familiar with seeing people moving about the shore. This subject was quite different in its size, color, and movement, leading him to be very confident that this was not a bear or a human. He did not see any other people around, on, or near the lake during this trip. He estimates his distance from the subject to be roughly 250 yards, and the distance he watched it walk back to the woods, about 50 yards, 
allowing him to make a very reasonable assessment of what he was seeing. If you or someone you know has a story they would like me to share or read, please submit it to stories at whatlooksbeneath.com. I would love to read it. Also, the majority of stories featured in this video were taken from BFRO.net, courtesy and thanks to them for allowing me to share their content.